Hey, good morning my fellow light explorers, hope you're all well. So I recently got the chance to buy the upgraded version of Skywatcher's very popular Star Tracker called the Star Adventurer. The new version is the 2i version and includes Wi-Fi. Now for those that don't know what a Star Tracker is, a Star Tracker is a device that lets you take long exposures of celestial objects like you know the stars, comets, moon, the sun, uh, without any trailing whatsoever. So it essentially negates or compensates for the Earth's rotation about its axis. I've had a chance to play with this tracker for around two months or so and I love this thing. So in this video I'm going to walk you through the setup process of setting up this uh, Star Adventurer uh, right from uh, how to set up the tripod, how to uh, mount the Star Adventurer on the tripod, how to polar align uh, how to uh, use a wide-angle lens or a telephoto lens on the tracker, how to aim it towards a DSO, and then how to trigger it, how to trigger your camera with uh, either uh, an external intervalometer or using the Wi-Fi app itself, which I love. So what I'll do is I'll leave timestamps in the description box below and you can jump to whatever section that interests you. So stick around, uh, it's going to be a long video, but hopefully it's worth it. Let me walk you through what comes uh, in the box with the Pro package. So we have the equatorial wedge, we have the declination bracket, we have the upgraded mount, you can see the 2i on the outside, and if you look very carefully, you'll see the mode dial has modes that differ from the prior version. We have the counterweight bar, the counterweight itself. We have the ball head adapter and the polar scope illuminator. I bought a second counterweight from BNH because I want to use heavier lenses like the 150-600 from Sigma. Uh, also, if you notice, I've got this case from Pelican. Uh, because uh, it's a pretty awesome case to store my gear. It's got this uh, pull and plug foam, so one can customize the case to their gear itself. It's a little expensive, around $130, but uh, I like Pelican as a brand. If you want something cheaper, you can get the Harbor Freight version for around $40. So I'll leave links below in the description if you are interested in buying these cases. All right guys, so let's now look at the mode dial on this uh, new tracker. So that's your mode dial right there and you have a bunch of uh, settings. Uh, first you have the app setting and when you turn that on, you can connect your smart device to the mount and control it. Then you have the LT mode, which is the long exposure time-lapse mode. RT is the regular exposure time-lapse mode. The star icon is the astro time-lapse mode, followed by lunar tracking, solar tracking, celestial tracking, and then off. You can thus uh, take tracked images with this unit and also use it for astro time-lapses. So both of these can uh, be controlled either directly on the mount using this dial or by setting this uh, mode dial to app and then uh, using that in conjunction with your smart device uh, via the Wi-Fi connection. This mount generates uh, its own Wi-Fi hotspot and you then just connect your phone or iPad to this Wi-Fi hotspot, open the SAM console app on your device and control all the features of this mount. So first what you'll do is you'll take your equatorial wedge and then screw it in on the tripod. So screw it in all the way until it is completely tight. So next you'll remove this plate from the equatorial wedge and affix this plate to the base of the Star Adventurer. Now you notice there are two screws on this plate. 
this screw right here, the center screw, will screw in the center of the base. The front screw will be screwed in until it sits in this indentation right here. And the idea is that if you only use the center screw to screw it in all the way, this plate can still move and there can be play in this uh, plate. But if you screw the front screw in also, so that it sits in this indentation, then the plate will sit flush and be tight and it won't move anymore. So make sure you screw in both the center screw and the front screw so that it sits in this indentation. All right guys, so now we have the plate affixed to the base of our mount and we need to fix the entire mount and connect it to our equatorial wedge. Now in terms of orientation, the start venturer has to face north so we can polar align this with the celestial pole, right? So this knob on the wedge will face north and these two screws uh, will always face south. That's the correct orientation. So slide this mount from the front all the way in until this stopper hits this plate and then tighten the knob here. And once tight, your wedge and the mount are now connected. All right guys, so now let's go through the process of uh, polar aligning. So polar aligning basically involves pointing the axis of the star adventurer to the north celestial pole in the northern hemisphere and the south celestial pole in the southern hemisphere. Since I'm in the northern hemisphere, my setup is focused on polar aligning using Polaris. It should be noted that we do not align the axis of the star adventurer with Polaris itself as Polaris is slightly offset from the North Celestial Pole and appears to apparently orbit around the North Celestial Pole in a circle. The large circle that you see in the reticle represents the apparent orbit of Polaris around the North Celestial Pole. Therefore our goal during polar alignment is to place Polaris in the correct location on that circle and we can use an app like the SAM app to find the exact location of Polaris for our latitude and time. So now we need to adjust the latitude on our equatorial wedge using these markings right here. But how do we find the latitude? Well, that's quite easy. Just open up your SAM console app. And once open, tap on the polar clock utility. And on the top right corner, you'll see location, tap on that. And you should see your latitude. In my case, it's 37 degrees, six minutes. So roughly 37 degrees. So what I'll do is I'll adjust this knob clockwise until the arrow here is aligned with my latitude. Now keep in mind each of these smaller uh, demarcations are 3 degrees each. So I need to go up to roughly 2 markings above 30. Also, uh, if you find this knob hard to move, you can adjust the drag by adjusting this lever, turn it anti-clockwise, and you should be able to move this uh, faster. All right, so I'm at 37 degrees, and once you're there, tighten this. If you need to adjust this lever, just pull this out and move it to the position you want and release it. At this point, turn your star adventurer to face north towards Polaris. If you aren't sure about where north is, you can use the compass app on your phone. Once you have found the location of north, turn your star adventurer to face north towards Polaris. Now, how do you find Polaris? What I do is I look for a group of stars known as the Big Dipper, which looks like a question mark. Look for the two outermost stars at the bowl of that question mark and extend them by an imaginary line by a distance equal to the distance between the top and the bottom stars of the Big Dipper. And you'll see Polaris right there. Once you have the mount pointing in the general direction of Polaris, 
I make some fine adjustments to ensure that I can see Polaris in the reticle. So what I do is I keep my eye just above the top of the mount and adjust the tripod legs until I can see Polaris just above the top of the mount centered over the mount. And so when I do that, essentially, it helps me see Polaris in the reticle and I can proceed with the polar uh, alignment. Now, on the mount, there's also a hole on the right side of the mount. And if you look through that hole, you can actually adjust your tripod until Polaris appears in that hole. And that'll do the same thing. Uh, once you have Polaris within that hole, you'll be able to see Polaris in the reticle and proceed with the polar alignment. Okay, so now it's time to level the tripod. Now let me say this, you do not need to level a tripod to get proper tracking as long as you are polar aligned. Let me repeat that. You do not need to level the tripod to get proper tracking as long as you are polar aligned. So even if your tripod is tilted, as long as your mount is aligned with the celestial pole, it's pointing towards the celestial pole, your gear will rotate around that axis. It does not matter if your tripod is tilted. Uh, you, as long as your mount is pointing towards the celestial pole, your tracking will be perfect. However, there are two reasons why I would still level the tripod. The first reason is, if your tripod is not level, then when you adjust the latitude adjustment knob to uh, try and polar align Polaris in your reticle, your mount will not move or Polaris will not move vertically up or down, but diagonally across. Similarly, when you try and slew using these azimuth adjustment uh, knobs uh, to try and uh, rotate the uh, star adventurer or move it uh, horizontally, it will not move in a perfect horizontal plane, but rather diagonally. So trying to align or get Polaris on the polar clock uh, will be a little cumbersome because these knobs won't function the way they're meant to. So you must uh, uh, try and level the tripod. Uh, but the second reason is more interesting. So let me tell you about that. So the second reason to level a tripod is because I want to ensure that the zero and six on the polar clock and the reticle is exactly vertical. So normally when we polar align, what we do is we'll adjust the, rotate the mounting bracket until the zero and six on the polar clock is in a vertical position. But that's eyeballing it, right? We don't know exactly if it's precisely vertical or not. And then we'll go to our SAM console app, we'll open the app, we will check the position of Polaris on the polar clock in the app, then come back here, make the adjustments to Polaris to ensure that Polaris happens to be in the exact same position uh, on the polar clock. However, Skywatcher has given us a very cool way to ensure that the zero and six on the polar clock in the reticle is always vertical. So let me show you how it's done. All right, guys, so how do we ensure that the zero and six on the polar clock and the reticle are exactly in a vertical position? For that, we'll use these graduated circles or dials on the rear of the Star Adventurer. So what you'll first do is you will rotate the outermost dial until the zero on the small graduation scale at the bottom of this big dial is aligned with this indicator here. So this indicator is called the time meridian indicator and the small scale is called the time meridian circle. So you will rotate this dial until the zero on the time meridian circle is aligned with the time meridian indicator. Once you've done that, you will rotate the mounting bracket until the date of October 31st, which is this big line halfway between 10 and 11, 10 being October, 11 being November. So this big line on this dial called the date graduation circle is aligned with the zero which is on the innermost graduated circle and this innermost graduated circle is called the time 
graduation circle. So don't worry about these terms. All you do is first rotate this outermost dial until the zero on a small graduated uh, circle is aligned with the indicator. And then you will rotate the mounting bracket until the big line halfway between 10 and 11 is aligned with the zero on the NMO scale. And once you've done that, and you look in the reticle, you will find that the zero and six on the polar clock are exactly vertical. Now, of course, this only works if the tripod is level, because these uh, uh, markings have come uh, calibrated from the factory, assuming that the tripod will be level. And that's why the tripod needs to be level if you want to use this method to ensure that the zero and six on the polar clock in the reticle are exactly vertical. Once you've leveled your tripod and you have your zero and six of the polar clock in a vertical line, you can check to see if your tripod's level. So what you do is choose a bright star that's in your reticle, Polaris for instance, and put that Polaris on the crosshair of the polar clock. So that's your crosshair and the polar clock. Put Polaris or the bright star on the crosshair of the polar clock. Then using the latitude adjustment knob, turn that clockwise or counterclockwise. And if your tripod's level, your star should move exactly on the vertical line up or down. If the star drifts outside the vertical line, then your tripod's not level. If you can polar align at dusk, that's more advisable because you can see Polaris clearly at dusk, it being a bright star. However, if you only can polar align at night, then you might have a problem locating Polaris when you look through the finder at the reticle. You might see a bunch of stars and not know which one is Polaris. To combat that problem, I bought myself a green laser from Amazon. And I'll leave a link below for this. What I do is I essentially turn this on, keep it flush with the top of the mount, and I point the laser towards Polaris. You can see a green beam going towards Polaris. Then I look through the finder at the reticle and I can clearly see which star the beam is heading and that is Polaris. So it's a quick and easy way to find out which star on the reticle is Polaris. Do note that uh, green lasers are not allowed in certain countries and uh, certain states. Uh, in Utah, for example, I cannot point my laser at an airplane, at a peace officer, or any person traveling in a car. Since I do my night images in the wilderness, I don't have to worry about the car and the peace officer. I do have to worry about airplanes. So before I turn this on and point this at the night sky, I look around, make sure we have no planes, then turn this on, find Polaris, turn it off, quick and easy, and I'm polar aligned. If it is dark and you can't see the reticle clearly, you can use the provided polar scope illuminator. All you do is insert the illuminator directly into the mount in the front and then turn the light on. If you have your declination bracket affixed to your mount and you would like to use your polar scope illuminator, you will need to use the provided spacer that came with your pro package. Simply connect the spacer with your illuminator like this and then insert the combined contraption into your bracket. Now move it up or down until the illuminator, the hole right here, is aligned with the uh, lens on the mounting bracket. Do note that uh, the spacer only fits in a certain orientation, so make sure that uh, when fitting it, you're fitting it so that these two plastic uh, protrusions, the flat ones, are the ones that are going and sitting flush with the uh, declination bracket. Do not insert it this way, where you have four of these protrusions. It will not go inside. So make sure the orientation is like this, where you have these two flat plastic uh, protrusions uh, sitting flush with the inside of the declination bracket. Once you have Polaris in the reticle of your star adventurer, it is now time to place Polaris in the precise location on the polar clock in the reticle of your star adventurer for your current time. In other words, you need to polar align. 
Now, you can use one of the many apps in the App Store to find the precise location of Polaris on the polar clock for your current time. I personally use Skywatcher's own app called the Sam Console app. And once you open the app, you will find a menu item called Polar Clock Utility. Tap on that and you will see where Polaris is supposed to be on the polar clock for your current time. Make a note of that position, then come back to your mount and make adjustments to your mount until Polaris is placed on the polar clock in the reticle of your Star Adventurer in the exact same position as you saw in the SAM console app. You can make the adjustments using the front latitude adjustment knob to move Polaris vertically up or down or you can use the rear azimuth adjustment knobs to slew Polaris left or right or you can use a combo of both to place Polaris at the exact location on the polar clock for your current time. Now, if you look at your polar clock in the reticle, you will see three circles and you might be wondering which circle to use. Well, if you look on the upper right corner, the upper right quadrant of your reticle, you will see some numbers like 2016, 2020, 2024, and you'll see three lines. Those three lines represent the three circles on the polar clock and the numbers represent the years. So essentially, you will use the line that is closest to your year. Uh, I think the middle line is the one that's closest to 2021. So I would say use the middle line, uh, the middle circle for now for 2021. Once you have aligned everything, tighten all the knobs, the azimuth adjustment knobs, the lever on the left side of the uh, uh, equatorial wedge and you are now polar aligned. Once you've polar aligned your star tracker it is now time to mount your camera gear onto the tracker. You can do this uh, in a couple of ways. If you have a light camera set up like a mirrorless camera or you intend to use a small lens like say a 14 millimeter or an ultra wide lens with your DSLR, you can simply use the ball head adapter that came with your uh, Pro package and a ball head. So screw the adapter to the base of your ball head until it's tight. Then before you place the adapter with the ball head into your mounting bracket of the star tracker, make sure this clutch black clutch on the outside is screwed tight okay once that is done you will slide this adapter in to the mounting bracket and then tighten this screw uh, make sure the screw sits in this indentation on the side of the adapter that way it won't move so slide this in tighten the screw all the way. Once that is done, you can then mount your camera onto the ball head. And you are good to go. So now you may ask that uh, this is facing north. How do you point the camera towards the DSO. So let's say your DSO is the Milky Way which is south in that direction. So what you'll do is you will simply loosen the ball head and turn the camera around to face the Milky Way, frame it the way you want and tighten the ball head. Once you've tightened it you can turn the tracker on to the mode you want in this case uh, sidereal or you can use the app uh, which I'll show you later and the mount will then move and allow the camera and the lens to track the Milky Way so the ball heads pretty easy and straightforward for uh, longer focal length lenses or heavier lenses or heavier camera gear I would use the fine-tuning mounting assembly and the counterweight kit that comes in the Pro package. So what you'll do is you will slide the weight uh, into the bar and then affix the bar 
to the bottom of the fine tuning mounting assembly. So screw it all the way in until it is tight. All right, and then slide this fine tuning mounting assembly all the way into the mounting bracket on the star tracker and then tighten the screw. Okay, so once you've done that, you can then fix your uh, lens or mount your lens to the declination uh, bracket. There's a mounting screw right here. So affix the screw to the bottom of your lens mounting collar and tighten that. Now, it's very important to note that uh, for longer lenses, uh, you should have a lens mounting collar like this for two reasons. One is that uh, if you attach this camera lens combo uh, to the uh, declination bracket from the camera itself, then what will happen is that the lens will place undue stress on the mount, on the camera mount. You don't want that to happen. So by using a lens collar, you are distributing the weight evenly between the front of the pivot point and the back of the pivot point. So at this point, the weight is balanced and there's no stress on the mount. And there's a second more important reason, uh, which I will show you in a few minutes. So you have your uh, lens collar affixed to the declination bracket. And now finally you can put the, you can attach the polar scope illuminator if it's dark. So remember what I told you earlier, you will just affix the spacer and then make sure that uh, you insert it in a way that the flat, these two flat pieces are the ones that are touching the sides uh, of the inside of the uh, declination bracket. So you will insert this inside here and you are good to go. Now at this point, uh, you might have polar aligned already before putting this, but putting all this weight on the tripod uh, may have caused the tripod to shift slightly or sink, uh, especially if there's a, a soft ground like sand. So definitely look through and polar align as before. Uh, and once you have polar aligned, we can then rotate the uh, camera's uh, position towards the DSO. Before I rotate my camera lens combo towards the DSO, I need to ensure the load is balanced and that there's no undue stress on the gears of my star tracker. Essentially, I want to make sure the weight distribution is equal on either side of the pivot point. To achieve this, I unlock the clutch and rotate the entire mechanism until it is parallel to the ground and then check to see which side is heavier. I notice that my camera lens side is heavier. So to counter that, I will slide my counterweight all the way to the end. And I notice that the camera lens side is still heavy. So the issue now is we don't have any more space to slide the counterweight any further, but we do have space on the fine tuning mounting assembly so we can actually lower that towards the pivot point. So let's take it there, tighten it and now see. And it seems to be balanced. We can now move the uh, boloscope illuminator all the way to be in the correct position. So if you have heavy lenses, this lens is really heavy, so uh, this counterweight is all the way to the end. Normal lenses would not be as heavy, 
but if you have a heavy lens and you're facing a problem that it is still heavy on the lens side, you could buy a new counterweight, a second counterweight, and put that uh, along with this one here. All right, so it's all balanced now. So now let's move towards pointing this camera lens combo towards the DSO. At this point, I'm sure you're all wondering how we're supposed to use this to point the lens towards any DSO. We don't have a ball head, so how will this work? Well, it's really quite easy. On the RA axis, we can move the camera about one plane, and then on the declination axis, we can move the camera around another plane. And that plane is orthogonal to the RA axis. So using a combo of both of these, we can point the lens in any direction. So let's say I want to point this lens towards you guys, the GoPro lens. So all I'll do is rotate this contraption until the lens points to the GoPro right there and then tighten the clutch. So now we are pointed towards the GoPro. But notice one thing, even though I'm pointing towards the GoPro and it seems to be oriented correctly, the camera is not framed the way I want it to be. I want this to be a vertical composition and the camera seems to be tilted sideways. What if I want it vertical? What if I want it framed in this direction? I can't do that. I can do that because I have this lens collar. And that's the second reason you need to have a lens collar for your lens. So by releasing the lens collar lock, the lever, I can rotate the lens until the camera and lens are vertical. And now it is framed correctly. All right, so let's do one more example. Let's say I want to point this lens right there behind me. So again, I release the clutches on both and then I can simply rotate the camera lens combo until the lens is pointing in the right direction and then I will tighten the clutches. Easy peasy. Okay, so now we have balanced the load in the RA axis and if we move this contraption and leave it in any position, it's not going anywhere. It's balanced. So let's say we want to point now to a DSO, a deep sky object. And let's say our DSO was in that direction. So I'll rotate this entire mechanism, I'll loosen the clutch, and I'll point my lens and camera towards the DSO. But notice when I release the camera, what happens? It's falling down. It is not balanced anymore. So what happened? We just balanced the whole thing in the RA axis. That's exactly it. We balanced the load in the RA axis. So we also need to balance the camera and lens on the load in the declination axis, which is orthogonal to the RA axis. Now, to balance the load in the RA axis, we actually had to move the weight up or down. And if that wasn't enough, we had to move this entire contraption, the uh, fine uh, tuning mounting assembly, up or down also in this direction. To balance the load in the declination axis, you need to find a way to move the camera and lens in this direction. So let me show you how that's done. To balance the load in the declination axis, we need to be able to slide the lens foot in and out. To help us with that, we can use a clamp like this, and then the lens foot will simply go into the clamp, and we will then be able to move it up or down, or in and out. Now, it may happen that uh, the lens foot is too small, and you probably went all the way, let's say, in this direction, and you, there's no more space or no more length of the lens foot. So in that case, I would say you can buy a plate to attach to your lens foot, a longer plate, and that'll help you go all the way until it's balanced. I'll leave links below on the plates I use. 
So you first connect your clamp to your fine tuning mounting assembly. So all you do is just uh, screw it in and make sure it is screwed on tight. Once it's tight, you just lighten your lens foot into the clamp and tighten the clamp. All right, let's make sure we are balanced in the RA axis. So loosen the clutch and yeah, we seem balanced. All right, let's now again aim our camera toward the DSO in the back. All right, so we will loosen the clutch on the declination bracket and just aim it towards the DSO in the back and then tighten that clutch and we find it is not balanced anymore. So all we'll do is we'll loosen the clamp, the knob on the clamp, and just move the lens in or out. If you move it back, it becomes more heavy. So move it uh, forward. And then let's see if this works. Okay, it's almost there, a little more. Cool. Tighten this and we're balanced. So now we are balanced in the RA axis and we are pointed towards our DSO. So that's how you balance it in the RA and the declination axis. All right guys, so now that we have balanced the load in both the axis and we have our camera and lens pointing to the DSO, we are all set, right? Well, not quite. We need to make sure that we are still polar aligned correctly because placing all that weight on the uh, mount and swiveling the camera lens around like this would probably have thrown the polar alignment out of whack. But here's the problem. To check the polar alignment, you need to release the clutch on the mount and then swing the entire contraption back until the zero and six in the reticle is vertical. Then open your SAM console app, check where Polaris is, make sure it's still there in the reticle, otherwise make adjustments to have it back uh, in the precise location, then swing the entire contraption back to where it was right now, or where it is right now, uh, and then frame it correctly. And uh, that could mean uh, two things, right? One is that uh, when you swing it back, it might again change the polar alignment. And secondly, uh, finding the framing again would be a pain, right? Because you need to make sure, take some test shots and see if the framing is correct or not. The simpler way, there's a beautiful app called the Polar Scope Align Pro app that actually lets you polar align or place Polaris even when the zero and six in the reticle is not vertical. And it only works for mounts that have these graduations on the back, like the Star Adventurer. So let me show you how that works. All right, guys, so let me walk you through how to use uh, Polar Scope Align Pro app to uh, polar line even with a rotated reticle. That is uh, when you don't have the zero and six in a vertical position. So what you'll do is look to see where October 31st on the date graduation circle. So essentially you want to see where this big line which is halfway between 10 and 11, 10 being October, 11 being November, where this big line intersects the time graduation circle, the innermost circle in the back. So you can see this uh, big line is intersecting exactly at 3.5, right? So it's, this is three and that's four, and the big line is intersecting exactly in the middle. So, it's 3.5, so it's offset by 3.5. Now let's go to our Polar Scope Align Pro app and uh, we shall make some adjustments there. Once you've installed Polar Scope Align Pro, then open the app and you'll notice that the colors are red. And for me personally, I don't like the red color because it's hard to read. So 
what I'll do is I'll go in the bottom right corner to the gear wheel as your settings tap on that and then you'll see an option called night mode color you can change the red to either green or white now I prefer green so I'll tap on that and then tap on done so the colors are now changed to green next we'll have to select our reticle so let's tap again on the gear icon on the bottom right and on top you'll see it says current reticle is ioptron so let's tap on change polar scope reticle and we want the orion forward slash sky watcher 2012-2032 which is the third option so i'm going to tap on that and then tap on done and done again all right so now we will tap on the second icon on the bottom right and come into a rotated reticle view. So first uh, you'll see that three tabs on the top Orion, CEM and the right side is star adventurer type. So tap on the star adventurer type. And now all we do is enter our noted value, the value we had earlier for the offset, the 3.5 hours in the RA rotation. So I'm going to enter 3 hours and 30 minutes and you can see the reticle rotates now and it should be the same as your uh, reticle in your uh, polar scope so you can now see Polaris is somewhere towards uh, the southwest uh, or towards the nine and uh, that's where you place uh, Polaris in your rotated reticle so I find this app to be super convenient because you don't have to uh, rotate the reticle back to the 0-6 uh, vertical position. You can just uh, make your adjustments to Polaris right there itself once you are framed, your DSO is framed. And the app costs like $3 and it's totally worth it. Now that the load's balanced, you're polar aligned and you're pointing towards the DSO and the DSO is framed correctly, it is time to start tracking. Now important to note that uh, start your tracking just before you frame your DSO. Otherwise the DSO will drift out of the frame and you don't want that to happen. You can actually track two ways. You can either select the uh, tracking mode using your uh, the mode dial on your Star Adventurer. So choose either sidereal, solar or lunar or you can track via Wi-Fi. So all you do is switch your mode dial to the app setting and then open up your SAM console app and select one of the tracking modes from there. And then you are tracking. Once you have your DSO framed correctly and you are tracking, it is time to start taking some photos. You can control the shutter speed on your camera one of three ways. You can either use the camera's built-in intervalometer, use an external intervalometer, or use the Wi-Fi on your mount to connect to the SAM console app and then control the shutter speed from the SAM console app. Now many cameras have built-in intervalometers, but they have a limitation of not going beyond 30 seconds. So that could be a problem. You can use an external intervalometer with no issues. My mode of preference right now is to use the Wi-Fi feature because it's so convenient. You simply connect your SAM console app to your mount via Wi-Fi and then control your shutter speed, number of shots, interval between shots, etc using the Wi-Fi. But to use the Wi-Fi feature of this mount, you would need to buy a DSLR shutter release cable like this one from Skywatcher's store for your brand. And once you buy this cable, I think it costs like $20, you'd connect one end of it to your camera. So one end goes into your camera's port and the other end goes into the snap port on the mount. Once you have the cable connected, you will turn the mode dial on your mount to app, the app setting, and then connect your uh, smart device to the mount via Wi-Fi and control the shutter speed, etc. using Wi-Fi. So let's walk through how to use that uh, app to connect to your mount and control the shutter speed. 
All right, guys. So first, you will turn the mode dial on your mount to the app setting, and that will enable the Wi-Fi hotspot for your mount. Next, you want to connect your smart device to your mount. So tap on the settings in your smart device and go to your Wi-Fi, and you will see the Wi-Fi SSID right there. In my case, it's Laken SA V2i because I've changed the SSID's name and I'll show you very shortly how to change that too. So tap on that and then your device will connect to your mount. And once connected, you'll see a blue checkbox to the left of uh, the SSID. Now let's open up our SAM console app. And once that opens, you'll see your SSID uh, on the bottom left in green. Green means it's connected. Now let me show you how to change the SSID of your mount. So simply tap on settings and then on the bottom you'll see the Wi-Fi network. So tap on that. And the second option from the top says SSID. So type in the name you want and hit apply. Now remember that uh, once you change the SSID of your mount, the uh, it'll disconnect. So you've got to go back to your uh, settings on your smart device and reconnect to the new SSID. All right, let's go back to the home page. And here you see all the options you can control with your phone now. Uh, we are concerned with astrophotography, so let's go there. You see now I can change the exposure, the interval between shots, and the number of photos uh, from this page. There's also a tracking rate uh, right there, so I've chosen sidereal. But if you tap on that, you'll see this menu in the bottom, and you can choose what you want, sidereal, solar, lunar. So I'm choosing sidereal, and then hit done. So let me walk you through an example of uh, taking some shots. So let's say I want to take three shots with an interval of four seconds between each of three seconds, right? I have my camera connected to the mount by the DSLR shutter release cable. So we are good to go out there. Now hit run. That's your first shot. Second shot. Third shot. So that's it guys. It's really easy. Once it's taken these shots uh, on the top right, you'll see that it's back to run from uh, stop. And uh, yeah, I find this Wi-Fi to be super convenient. I can sit in my car and control, you know, all the uh, exposures I want on a cold night, so that's cool. So that's about it for the app. If you have any questions, uh, leave them below in the comment section. All right, guys, so that concludes this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, do ask them in the comment section below. I think I've covered pretty much everything, but there could be something I missed out. Now, I plan on doing a follow-up video a few weeks from now that will walk you through the process of blending a foreground image with a night sky. So we'll take a foreground image, we'll take several night shots with the Star Adventurer, then we'll stack those night shots in a program like Starry Sky Stacker, and then finally blend that stacked image with the foreground image. So look out for that. In the meantime, if you like this video, then like, share, subscribe as always. It really helps my small channel grow. And until next time, this is the Light Explorer signing up of beautiful Southern Utah.